Want to use your Godcatcher 9000 on a Weedle? Go for it. If it's not a good color, I think you should run away from the shiny. This is not your conventional list. It's more of a path that if you can follow it to the end, I guarantee you'll have a better time just playing the game. Number 10, deleting all of your non-attack moves. When I was a kid, I did this constantly. Bulbasaur was a prime example. I'd get rid of all those useless powder moves so I could learn cool things like Vine Whip and tackle. Sure, attacking is cool, but status moves can help with getting through the game way faster. And Dragon Dance? If you get the chance to use this, you can just start wrecking some teams. Number nine, not having an HM mule. Look, just because Swamper can learn all the HMs doesn't mean he should. In an ideal world, we would just have items anyway, but sometimes that's not possible. So catching a Pokemon to teach all these moves to is one of the things that made my gameplay more enjoyable. Number eight, not going to a Pokemon Center when you enter a town. This functions as a sort of soft save for the game. If your Pokemon faint before you've been to the Pokemon Center, you'll go all the way back to the last one you used. This can be so annoying after going through something like Zubat Cave or Zubat Cave 2 Dark Edition. Number Number seven, neglecting your held items. This was introduced in generation two from berries to quick claw or even leftovers. This was one of the mechanics in the game that really add a lot of firepower to your mons or give Pokemon that otherwise struggle to keep up the edge they might need to stay on your team. Number six, overlooking your Pokemon's natural talents. Just like actors, Pokemon have their own roles to play. There's no need to force a Chansey to be a speed queen. Recognizing their strengths is the key to assembling a winning team. I like to have a specialized lineup for different situations. A tank with false white for catching Pokemon, a water type for rainy terrain, and Pokemon with overworld effects. But more on that later. Number five, forgetting to math. Okay, this one is a little bit more advanced, but Pokemon is a game built on math. I'll give you a scenario. Feel free to pause to work out your damage calc. You sent out a Psyduck with Water Pulse and Scratch against a Turtwig. Which move should you use? A lot of people will use Scratch in this situation, despite the fact that Water Pulse has that same type ability bonus Psyduck has higher special attack than attack, and Turtwig has higher defense than special defense. That means that Water Pulse, while not being very effective, is still gonna do more damage. Sometimes, what's not very effective is the most effective. Number four, not having a plan, because the AI definitely cheats. Have you ever tried sand attacking your opponent? They will still hit every move. Take one sand attack from your opponent though, and you will never hit anything ever again in your entire life. The AI cheats, and I don't have any proof of this, but personal experience speaks volume. There is one thing that you have that the AI doesn't have though. Heart of the cards, guide me. No, not that. You have the power of choice. If your opponent loves to lower accuracy, teach your Pokemon Aerial Ace, which never misses. If they keep getting lucky crits, know what your crit range is and be ready to switch your Pokemon. If you know their Pokemon like to poison or paralyze, then refer to tip number seven and carry that berry with you that'll help out. Remember, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Number three, getting too attached to your Pokemon. No, <laughs> not like that, don't be weird. I mean that there are over a thousand Pokemon now. Each generation reveals about a hundred new monsters. To only try six per game, it would, it would take you forever to discover the intricacies of each Pokemon. Consider this next time you play. Catch Pokemon that help you with specific battles, and then give them some time off. The way I do it, while still feeling like I have some type of conscience, is I put the Pokemon in the box environment they'd most enjoy being. Number two, forgetting about overworld mechanics. I've used Dick as my perma escape rope since generation three and teleport to get out of some tricky situations and back to the Pokemon Center. But some of these I learned about while making this video. Soft boiled and milk drink can be used to help recover HP outside of battle. Sweet scent can attract wild Pokemon and in gen six, this is actually gonna attract a wild horde. And if you use cut in generations one through three, it will mow the tall grass. And finally, number one, playing the game without repels. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but I still see a ton of people not doing it. Holy Miltank, get repels. They're not that expensive and they will save you hours going through Pokemon dense regions or places you've already visited. Just buy the repels. Watch me ignore all those rules in this playthrough of Fire Red.